The 1586A SuperDAC provides a unique feature for automating sensor calibration that greatly increases lab productivity. When connected to a fluke dry well or fluid bath, the SuperDAC can control the temperature source to run the calibration automatically, all within the parameters you specify. After you configure and start the test, you can walk away to work on other things. The 1586A SuperDAC just made your day a whole lot easier. This video provides a step-by-step -step guide for setting up and running an automated sensor calibration. The SuperDAC can control most fluke temperature sources including metrology wells, handheld and field calibrators, thermocouple furnaces, micro baths, and calibration baths. One temperature source can be connected to the SuperDAC at a time. There are seven steps to set up and run an automated sensor calibration. In this video, we'll use the SuperDAC with a 9142 field metrology well. Step 1. Connect the RS-232 cable. Connect a null modem RS-232 cable to the temperature source control port on the rear panel of the SuperDAC and to the RS-232 port on the front of the 9142. Ensure that the baud rate of the 9142 matches the 1586A. To check the 9142 baud rate, press the menu System menu, System setup, and COM setup keys. Change the baud rate to 9600 if needed using the left and right arrow keys. When finished, press Enter, Exit, and Menu. Check the 1586A baud rate by pressing Instrument setup. Scroll down using the arrow key until you see Temperature Source. Select the Edit key. Change the baud rate if needed and select OK. You can designate a configured channel as the reference probe or connect to the front panel, channel 1. We have connected a 5628 probe to the front panel. We have connected three Type T thermocouples to channels 1 through 3 of a high capacity module. The high capacity module is inserted into the slot on the back of the SuperDAC. The thermocouple ends are then inserted into the 9142. Step 2. Configure the SuperDAC channels. Press Channel Setup. We'll enable channel 001 for the reference probe and channels 101 through 103 for the thermocouples. Use the up-down arrow keys to choose channel 001. Press Edit Channel. Select Function and press Edit. Press Probe Library and choose the desired probe from the list of pre-configured probes. Press Assign to Channel 001 and Verify Channel to confirm that the channel has been configured properly. Press the Back key twice to return to the Channel Setup menu. The probe library lets you save probe parameters for future recall, which simplifies setup. Refer to the user's manual for instruction on adding probes to the library. Next, we'll select the thermocouple channels. Use the up-down arrow keys to choose channel 101. Press On. Press Edit Channel. Set function to Thermocouple. Select thermocouple type T and OK. Press Verify Channel to confirm that the channel is reading properly. Press Back twice and then Copy Channel. Press Select to paste channel 101's configuration to channels 102 and 103. Press OK when complete. You can confirm that any channel has been configured properly by selecting the channel, pressing Edit Channel, and then Verify Channel. Step 3. Select Test Parameters. Press Test Setup. Change the Trigger Type to Automated Test by pressing the Edit key twice. Scroll down to Automated Test and select OK. Scroll down to Scan Count and press Edit. We'll enter a scan count of 30 and press OK. Scroll down to Sequence and press Edit. 
there are three scan sequences available. Linear, alternate reference, or up-down. Select Linear and press OK. Scroll down to Reference Channel 1 and press Edit. Choose Channel 001 and press OK. Leave Reference Channel 2 as None. Scroll down to Control Source and press Edit. Choose On and press OK. Then press Back. On the Test Setup menu, scroll down to Auto Recording. Press Edit. Choose On and press OK. In this example, the file destination will be internal. If desired, you can write data directly to a USB device connected to the USB port on the front panel. Step 4. Choose Set Point Temperatures. Scroll up to Trigger Type. Press the Edit and Set Point keys. We will configure two set points. Select Set Point 1 and press Edit. Enter a set point temperature of 30 degrees C. Tolerance of 1.0 degrees C. Stability of 1.0 degrees C and a soak time of 15 seconds. Then press Back. Select Set Point 2 and then press Edit. Enter a set point temperature of 40 degrees C. Tolerance of 1.0 degrees C. Stability of 1.0 degrees C and soak time of 15 seconds. Then press Back. Step 5. Start the scan. Press the Scan Monitor key and select Start Scan. Step 6. Collect data. The automated test state will display a scan status of Settling while the temperature source stabilizes. After the source has stabilized, the automated test state will display a scan status of scanning while the data is being collected. Data can be written to internal memory or a USB flash drive during a test. You can select data, graph, or monitor view modes during data collection. To view data, press the data key. To see a data graph, press back and graph keys. You can graph up to four channels simultaneously. We'll select the reference probe, channel 1, and three thermocouples. Press Select to add channel 1. Scroll down to channel 101 using the down arrow key and press Select. Add channels 102 and 103 also. Press Setup Graph and Manual Scale. Use Zoom Out, Zoom In, Move Up and Move Down keys to adjust the graph. To monitor data, press the Back key three times. Then press Monitor. The Channel 1 temperature is being displayed. Step 7. Analyze data. Once the data has been collected, it can be transferred to a PC as an Excel CSV file for analysis. Insert a flash drive into the SuperDAC front panel USB port. Press the Memory key and select Internal Files. Select Scan Data Files. Choose the desired file. Select Manage and then Copy to USB. Rename the file if desired and press Save. Wait until it says File Copy Completed and press OK. Then you can remove the USB flash drive and take it to a PC for analysis. The automated sensor calibration feature of the 1586A SuperDAC can have a big impact on your calibration lab throughput and efficiency. 
It's real handy when you have lots of sensors to calibrate and limited time and staff to do it.